So a lot of you might see me just magically appear on stage and thought, hmm, I don't really care for that guy's face. <laughs> so others of you might be looking up here thinking, black buttons on a white shirt? Nice. So others of you might be focused on something completely different. You might be ruminating about a fight you had the other day with someone and thinking, I can't believe he said that. Well, if he says this, man, I wish he would. Whatever it is you're thinking right now, the point is you're thinking. So what happens when we're thinking? We're outside the moment. We curate reality through a pre-constructed worldview, a silhouette. Our attachments, judgments, and expectations have us live in someone else's life, who we were told to be versus who we were born to be. When we're living on the outskirts of the moment, we know we're missing out. We just can't put our finger on what. So we live our lives angry, fearful, depressed, constantly chasing the next thing. But that's not how it has to be. What would happen if we were to just relax into this moment right now? We discover our peace. And in knowing our peace, we are free. Let me tell you how surrendering in the moment completely changed my life. Back in 06, I started a nonprofit when I moved to San Diego, Chance for Hope. Our mission was to help people off the streets and into jobs. In 2009, a friend came to me with the idea to expand and create AWARE. We used the money generated from recycling to fund community programs. Over time, my life and the charity became completely indistinguishable. My life was in shambles and I had no idea. I'll give you an example. One day I'm taking a break downtown for recycling and I'm just sitting against a wall, soaking in some sun. And this guy in a business suit walks up to me and hands me a dollar. <laughs> I jump up, I chase him down. I'm like, no, 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 man, you don't understand. I actually run a charity. I had to argue with him for a couple minutes to convince him that I wasn't living on the streets. I did keep the dollar though. <laughs> then in 2014, the charity came to a crashing halt. I fought tooth and nail for another six months to keep the doors open, but by then I was spent. Those were the far, by far the hardest eight years of my life. I faced death threats, theft, political corruption. I nearly lost a limb. My gums bled for weeks on end and were beginning to fall off in pieces. I was having a nervous breakdown every couple of hours. Large chunks of the day would go where I couldn't even move. If I finished half a bowl of oatmeal for the day, confetti should have rained from the sky. <laughs> I lost over 30 pounds. I couldn't live in my van because I already promised that to a title loan company, a last ditch effort to keep the dream alive a hopeful moment longer. And then one day in June, a ray of hope came into my life. This woman I met a few years ago hit me up. Hey, I'm in town for a few days. I'd love to meet up. And just so you know, that was a, that was a pretty spot on impersonation, by the way. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if you experienced this before, but you know you meet that special person and you know instantly, that's the one I want to be with. I'm not going to oversell it, so I'll just say this. At that time, I probably would have given up a toe to be with her. <laughs> so remember, she reaches out, I'm barely hanging on by a thread. I piece myself together as best I can and we meet up. Over the two days of hanging out, I came to realize, and so did she, that I'm not the man she deserves to have in her life. And even worse yet, I'm not happy with my life. I'm driving home, sitting at a stoplight, and just absolutely screaming inside. The water's far past boiling at this point. The thoughts are becoming deafening, each one fighting to be heard at the same time. Blown up with the woman in my dreams, the debt, the death threats, the rejected marriage proposals. You, you name it, like all of us just come into a crescendo. I grab on the steering wheel and I'm this close to ripping it right off the dash. It was the lowest point of my life. The following week, I closed the door of the charity and began my PhD. For my research, I conducted a qualitative phenomenological study, exploring the experience of healing and meditation in practitioners of the Wim Hof Method. 
And though, for those of you who don't know, Wim Hof is an amazing individual. He holds over 26 Guinness World Records. And he actually did a TED Talk back in 2010 where he submerged himself in ice on stage, demonstrating the power of his method. His method is composed of three pillars, breathwork, cold immersion, and mindset. Nine of the 10 participants I interviewed were certified instructors. They were from many walks of life, world-class athletes, Navy SEALs, engineers, people in sales. I was extremely privileged to have access to such a wealth of knowledge. The data was coded using a narrative analysis, which basically means exploring their lived experience before, during, and following their participation in the method. All 10 participants reported a profound and transformational change occurring through the method. For instance, when talking with participant four, I confirmed, now it sounds like you've gained a lot more compassion towards others, is that accurate? His response, which is still one of my favorites, was, that, my friend, is a dramatic understatement. Before this, I thought the world needed to be drowned in a toilet. <laughs> now, bear in mind, he was a bartender for 17 years. So on a nightly basis, he saw the best that humanity has to offer. <laughs> right now, you might be asking yourself, what does any of this have to do with surrender? I'll give you an example. Let's stick with participant four. He's taking an ice bath at home one day, just despising it, and, but he's toughing it out. He's hating every second of it. You know, the whole no pain, no gain mentality. If it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. That's how he dealt with every ice bath before this and really anything difficult in his life. So as he's finishing up, his wife comes in and asks if she could try. He gets out, she jumps in, and as she submerges into the ice, she lets out a, <sighs> to which his response was, and I won't cuss because it's a TED talk, but what the F was that? What just happened here? So she explained, I just surrendered into it. And so, of course, his natural follow-up to that was, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so she went on. It's just like giving birth. I have to accept it, relax into it, in order to get through it. He reported this healed a toxic masculine wound that he was unaware of. And from that day forth, he understood that he always had the ability to accept the moment. That enduring and powering through something wasn't always the answer leading to his greatest good. Eight out of the 10 participants reported some form of a spiritual transformation, a feeling of universal oneness, receiving life-changing insights and guidance in a single moment, uh, living their lives with greater compassion, and the list goes on. So how does all this occur? Even though the Wim Hof Method doesn't directly incorporate meditation into their practice, they're still utilizing meditative techniques. Funny enough, six out of the 10 participants reported a complete inability to meditate prior to beginning the practice. My research revealed two meditative uh, techniques at play here. The first one, focused attention meditation, and the second one, open monitoring meditation. The first one is just like it sounds. We focus all of our awareness on a single object. This could be our breath, the flame of a candle, a mantra, whatever we can utilize to bring ourselves back into the moment if we find ourselves getting lost in thought. Open monitoring meditation is just watching the thoughts. Witnessing it unattached as it just passes through while fully accepting the moment. Like clouds in the sky. The thoughts, feelings, emotions, whatever, those are the clouds. And the sky, our awareness, is the infinite, ever-present sky. Has anyone ever seen a cloud stay in the sky? Nah, <laughs> it's not possible. A cloud can't even block out the sun. It's just our limited perspective from where we're standing. Now, here's where things get interesting. 
Participants usually begin with some form of a focused attention meditation before advancing into an open monitoring technique. When the thoughts have stilled, or at least there's no attachment or identification with them, then a transpersonal experience can occur. The research further indicates a transpersonal experience is a precursor to a transformation. So how can we all take the power of surrender and apply it in our lives right now? The answer to that may be found in another question. How deep are we willing to let go? It's not about gaining some knowledge or learning a new skill. It's about letting go, surrendering, accepting and relaxing into this moment. Basically become comfortable in our discomfort. So right now, I'd like to do a quick exercise. We're all gonna take three deep breaths. And for these breaths, they're gonna be, we're gonna inhale through the nose, down into the stomach, stomach and the belly button's gonna rise up with air, and then we're gonna exhale. Same exact path all the way out the nose. We're gonna inhale for five seconds, and we're gonna exhale for seven. So it's gonna look something like this. Three, four, five, exhale. Three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty simple, right? All right, ready? Let's begin. First one, inhale. Three, four, five. Exhale. Three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale deep into the belly, two. Three, four, five. Exhale. Three, four, five, six, seven. Last one, breathe deep. Inhale. Three, four, five. Exhale. Three, four, five, six, seven. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Anyone feel more calm or peaceful? Look how quick we were able to alter our physiology just by breathing three conscious breaths. That's with us always, anytime, anywhere. Play around with the breath. It's our compass. How we breathe is how we live. Become aware of the space between both breaths and we'll be forever changed. When we're fully in the moment, imagine how great it is when we're able to drop our silhouettes. We're fully immersed in what we're doing. That's how Clay Thompson's able to drop 37 points in a quarter, or Muhammad Ali has his hands down, dodging every one of four of his shots. When we're fully in the moment, we function with greater focus and clarity. We become better listeners, more attentive and responsive lovers. Our inter and interpersonal relationships improve. Productivity increases. We're better equipped to deal with stress. Or rather, we witness it unattached as it just passes through. I know this not just because of my research, but because I've lived it. You remember that moment when I was about to rip the steering wheel right off the dash? Just as I was braking, something amazing happened. Instead of fighting or trying to control it, I entered into a meditative state and I surrendered to it. I witnessed it. Unattached, recognizing all of it is just thoughts. And it passed. In that moment, I touched that place within myself, that place within all of us, known as unconditional love, ever-present peace. You ever go crazy looking around your house for your keys just to find they're in your hand or pocket the whole time? It was like that. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with this. Real peace is not achieved through conquest. It's already here right now for all of us. And in this sense, surrendering isn't a sign of weakness. It's the ultimate testimony of strength. Thank you very much for your time. Much love. <laughs> Thank you.